Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for having given us an experience of your love during this one hour. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing us into the presence of the Father in Jesus Christ. Oh, Holy Spirit, you have been poured into our hearts. By your power, we have the spirit of prayer. Thank you for helping us to pray. You are the spirit of light. Without you, we will grope in darkness. You are the knowledge and wisdom. Without you, we will be ignorant and helpless. Oh, Holy Spirit, you bestow upon us the virtues of faith, hope, and charity. All the virtues come from you, O Spirit of God. Elevate us to the supernatural life by your grace and gifts. Holy Spirit, you are the Lord and life giver. Without you, we will be lifeless, O Spirit of God. You alone can impart to us the experience of God. O Holy Spirit, you led Jesus Christ. You guided the prophets and apostles. Abide in us today, remain in our heart, be our constant companion in our life, and never let us go astray. Almighty Father in heaven, we beg you in the name of Jesus, your well-beloved Son, pour out your Spirit anew upon us and fill us with his fire. Transform us and let us experience the mystical touch, O Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, now and, and, and ever shall be, world, world without end. Amen. 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 Am I audible? Yes. yes. Thank you. So last time, last Monday, we have seen just the phrase, our Father in heaven. And we understood when we refer our Father, when we say our Father, we recognize first that all his promises of love announced by the prophets are fulfilled in the new and eternal covenant in Jesus Christ. Amen. So we have become his people and he is henceforth our God. This new relationship is purely a gratitude gift. It's a gratitude gift, purely a gratitude gift, a gift freely given to us without any merit of ours, but merit of Jesus Christ. So we need to respond to grace and truth given us in Jesus Christ with love and faithfulness. When we see our Father, we are invoking the new covenant in Jesus Christ in communion with the Holy Trinity and the divine love which spreads through the church to encompass the entire world. And who art in heaven, in short, we have seen, it does not refer to a place, but to God's majesty and his presence in the hearts of the just. The hearts of the righteous become brighter and brighter, become holier and holier when we acknowledge God who is in heaven. Heaven is not right up, but it is God's majesty and his presence in the hearts of the just. Heaven, the Father's house, is a scrum homeland, we know that, but toward which we are heading and to which we already belong in Jesus Christ. This is in short, last week's a reflection on our Father in heaven. Today, we are going to reflect on our Father in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, hallowed be thy name. Before I could explain this, uh, the meaning of this hallowed be thy name, we will see I think as last time I mentioned the seven petitions. After we have placed ourselves in the presence of our Father and called him our Father in heaven, 
and we adore and worship God and we understood the spirit of adoption. This spirit of adoption stirs our hearts to bless God, invoke seven blessings. The first three are more theological. It draws us toward the glory of the Father. The other four are, it is focused towards us and for our needs. Now we will reflect in the first three supplications or petitions, that is, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. These are the three petitions purely addressed to God. It is so very natural when we love someone, we will think first of that person whom we love. So in the same way, when we love God, our Father in heaven, we will also first address to God and glorify him. With these three petitions, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. These three supplications are already answered in the saving sacrifice of Christ. But they are directed in hope toward our final fulfillment. For God is not at God in all. All in all, we know that the whole creation is groaning towards perfection. At the second coming of Christ, at our final judgment, God become all in all. So now we shall focus on hallowed be thy name. We ask that his name be kept holy among us and in our lives. In this petition, we ask God to let all we think, say, and do bring glory and honor to his holy name. Bring glory and honor to his holy name. We ask that we would live in such a way that we do not dishonor his holy name and drag it down with our sinfulness. It brings God glory and honor when we hallow his name, when we humbly believe his word and acknowledge our sinfulness and trust in his son, Jesus Christ, as our savior. We see in Ephesians, Chapter 1, verse 3, 3 to 14, it's a long passage. 3 itself, we see. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual bless, bl bl blessing in the heavenly places, that we should be holy and blameless before him. So, in short, when we address God, hallowed be thy name, what is happening is, God's glory is brought, but we are becoming holier and holier. Isaiah the prophet wrote in, his, in, the, in the chapter 8, 13, only Yahweh Sabbath is holy. Only him must you hold in veneration. Only him must you fear. Only him must you dread. Dread means it's a holy fear. God teaches us that it brings honor to the name of the Lord God when we are faithful to his holy word. When we are faithful to his holy word in our learning, in our teaching, in our preaching, and in our witness for him. 
we pray in this petition hallowed be thy name that all we think speak and do may bring glory to our father in heaven that his name would indeed be kept holy among us jesus said in matthew chapter 5 verse 16 let your light so shine before men that they may give they may see your good work and give glory to your father in heaven the holiness of god is the inaccessible center of his eternal mystery we can under- never understand fully the holiness of god it is an eternal mystery what is revealed of it is on in creation and history scripture calls this glory we see the glory of god but the holiness of god is a mystery that is what when moses was trying to go near to god stay where you are the place you stand is holy god said the holiness of god is fully understood by jesus christ scripture calls a reflection of the holiness of god as glory the radiance of his majesty in making man in his own image and likeness god crowned him with glory and honor this we learn in psalm 8 great is your name lord great is your name lord its majesty fills the earth yes you have made him and crowned him with glory and honor you have made him with less than the angels that is man so when we pray this hallowed be thy name supplication we are becoming holier and holier and holier god is sanctifying us the holy spirit is sanctifying us and as we pray in tongues also every day we are glorifying god we are not adding anything to his holiness because his holiness is complete but we are adding to his holiness not holiness we are glorifying him in ourselves in creation in humanity so the benefit is for us god by himself is holy he doesn't require but we require to glorify him because we need to be sanctified we need to be made holier and holier this is the meaning of it in the promise to abraham also this his oath accompanied it god commits himself but without disclosing his name he never disclosed his name to abraham first he begins to reveal it to moses i am who i am and makes known clearly before the eyes of the whole people when he saves them from the egyptians he has triumphed gloriously from the covenant of sinai onwards this people is his own people and it is to be holy a people consecrated to him because the name of god dwells in his people the name of god dwells in his people in spite of the holy law that again and again the holy god gives them you shall be holy for i the lord your god am holy so god wants us to be holy that is what jesus taught this prayer hallowed be thy name 
and although the lord chose patience for the sake of his name the people turn away from the holy one of israel and profane his name among the nations for this reason the just ones of the old covenant the righteous people the poor survivors returned from exile we know that and the prophets were burned with passion for the name of god moses and his people sang his song a song of yahweh i will sing to yahweh glorious his triumph in exodus chapter 19 verse 5 to 6 we see now if you listen to me and keep my covenant you shall be my very own possession among all the nations and you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation so we are a holy nation a royal priesthood we need to sing the praises of god in ezekiel chapter 20 verse 9 we understand but for the sake of my name i relented lest it be profaned in the sight of the nations god's name can never be profaned in the sight of the nations god relented god took back his anger and where they lived whose inhabitants had seen how i revealed myself to israelites in bringing them out of egypt so god showed his power his glory by bringing the israelites out to egypt and finally in jesus in matthew chapter 1 verse 21 and now she shall bear a son and you shall call his name jesus for he will save his people from their sins so we got a name to glorify the name of god is given in jesus in jesus name that is god's own name his father's name in john chapter 17 verse 11 and 19 i am no longer in the world but they are in the world whereas i am going to you holy father keep them in your name that you may ha- that you have given me so very clearly it is said keep them in your name in your holy name that you have given me so that they may be one just as we are again in chapter 17 6 of john I have made your name known to those you gave me from the world Jesus says In Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 to 11 That is why God exalted him and gave him the name which outshines all other names so that at the name of Jesus all knees should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and all tongues confess that Jesus Christ is lord to the glory of god the father this is philippians chapter 2 verse 9 to 11 in the catechism of the holy catholic church number 2813 it reads in the waters of baptism we have been washed sanctified justified in the name of the lord jesus christ and in the spirit of our god our father calls us to holiness in the whole of our life and since he is the source of our life in Christ Jesus so in Christ Jesus we are we are made holy his name is the father's name thank you jesus
choice of his will. He said, I refuse to get yes. discouraged. But he said, I refuse to get discouraged. I choose all. And First Corinthians, chapter six, verse verse thirteen. It says, "Some of you were like that. Like that means we were sinful, but you have been cleansed and consecrated to God, and have been set right with God by the name of the Lord Jesus and the Spirit of our God." Again in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 13, but by God's grace, you are in Christ Jesus, who has become our wisdom from God, who makes us just and holy and free. Also we read in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 26, you are to be holy for me as I am holy. You are to be holy for me, for I am holy. Yahweh, your God, and I have set you apart from the nations to be mine. We're going to look at verses 1 through 4 as once again as we continue our series uh, verse by verse study of the book of Romans. So let's read reading in Romans 14 and verse In Romans Chapter 2, verse 24. In fact, as the scripture says, the other nation despised the name of God because of you. The sanctification of his name among the nations depends inseparably on our life and our prayer. We are not really praying for us to sanctify us to make us holy, but the sanctification of his name among the nations depends inseparably on our life and our prayer. We ask God to hallow his name, which by his own holiness saves and makes holy all creation. It is this name that gives salvation to a lost world. But we ask that this name of God should be hallowed in our thoughts, our actions. For God's name is blessed when we live well, but it is blasphemed when we live wickedly, when we are in sin. As the apostle says, the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. We ask then that just as the name of God is holy, so we may <coughs> become his holiness in our souls. So see, we have the same one phrase, hallowed be name is pregnant with the scripture. Everything we see in the salvation history, how Jesus, in his name, his name is made holy. And in Jesus' name, we can address God directly, hallowed be thy name. When we say hallowed be thy name, we ask that it should be hallowed in us who are in him, but also in others whom God's grace still awaits. This is what we are praying. God's grace still awaits for someone who has not been part of his kingdom. So we are glorifying God when we pray, hallowed be thy name. When we pray in tongues, might be the Holy Spirit is helping us to glorify God's name again and again. Many times we may be repeating, hallowed be thy name, unknowingly in the spirit, that we may obey the precept that obliges, obliges us to pray to, for everyone, 
This is what we are doing when we are praying in tongues. Even our enemies, we should pray. That is why we do not say expressly, expressively, hallowed be thy name in us. No, we say, hallowed be thy name. For we ask it for all others too. This petition embodies all the others, like the six petitions that follow it. Now we only we are seeing this one petition, hallowed be thy name today. It is fulfilled by the prayer of Jesus Christ. Pray to our Father is our prayer. If it is prayed in the name of Jesus. In his priestly prayer, Jesus asks, Holy Father, protect in your name those whom you have given me. Thank you, loving Father, for having allowed us to reflect on your holy name, which you have given in Jesus, your son. And this name has redeemed us. Thank you, Jesus, for your incarnation. You're living here on earth, teaching us the beautiful prayer, our Father in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. By your passion, by your death, by your resurrection, you have made us your worthy children. You have taken us to your father's bosom as adopted children, as loving sons and daughters who can address to your, our father, your father as our father, our father in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thank you, Jesus, for this beautiful prayer. As we have reflected the depth of the meaning of hallowed be thy name, help us today to reflect on this phrase often and experience the holiness of God within us and invoke the presence of the Holy Spirit again and again as a sanctifier and to proclaim you as Jesus. You are the Lord. You are the Redeemer. You are the Savior. Jesus is Lord. May your kingdom come. This prayer I make to you in your holy name. Amen. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, sister. sister. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Thank you, sister. 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 Thank you, sister